Hello, I'm Kate Kiss, this is Bruno, and today is a lovely day for two reasons. Reason number one, my cameraman. My cameraman is home. He's home for a nanosecond, but he is home. Blink and you will miss it. But there he is, my little diamond twinkling in my sky. <laughs> All right, second reason is I have 32 subscribers. The numbers are skyrocketing. <laughs> and you are all clearly people of great good taste and discernment. And I'm actually incredibly grateful that there are 32 people in this world prepared to give me their time. So I am grateful, thank you very much. And I'm not needy. And I'm not counting. I am. I am needy. I am counting. Anyway, so back to Bruno. Today I want to talk about the disconnect that happens all too frequently in horses that have undergone, for want of a better word, conventional training, and the disconnect that develops between their minds and their bodies. I think I've touched on this before, but I want to talk about what it is, how it occurs and how to get over it. Um, so what we do with our conventional training, and I'm not knocking anybody, but this does happen very frequently, is that we treat horses entirely physically and we deal with them entirely physically. So we use physical sorts of control. And if the horse tries to input something that it's thought of, often we don't even notice. And if we do notice, um, often we will actively discourage it or even punish it because it's not something we've asked for and it's not all about control, 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 which is what we often tend to do. And the result of this <laughs> I don't know how many times I've heard people say, my horse is really clumsy and really stupid. In a completely flat area, it will fall over literally fresh air or its own feet. Right, the horse is not... The horse is not clumsy or stupid. The horse has just learned Go, go, just sniff that. Missed it. Go on. Okay, the horse is not clumsy or stupid. It's just learned that in order to survive mentally, good boy, it needs to completely tune out to what you're doing. And also, we give them a lot of white noise, stuff that they have to just ignore in order to survive. So you've just got a horse that's mentally elsewhere as you're riding it. So of course they're clumsy because they're not looking at all where they're going. And a good way to reconnect the horse's mind and body is with obstacles. And it's not just about making the horse go round an obstacle without seeing what's there. It's about communicating with the horse, making sure that the horse sees the obstacle, registers it, and reconnects them with you and with the environment. Now, the more observant of you will have noticed that I have round my waist a leather satchel. And in the leather satchel are horse sweeties. And horse sweeties are a subject that divide the horse world as thoroughly as Brexit is currently dividing the UK, 
or the US is currently being divided by Trump. So what you have are people on two sides who each think they are completely right and the other side not only is completely wrong but is actually evil as well. Anyway, so horse sweeties. What are the negative things that people say about horse sweeties? One, that they will cause your horse to be aggressive and attack you and mug you for sweeties. Two, that if you give a, a horse that is fearful a treat, it doesn't make it brave or stop it being fearful. Um, three, that it doesn't make the horse see you as a leader. And four, everything becomes entirely about the sweetie for the horse, so it's still mentally disconnected because it's not thinking about what it's doing, it's just going, I want a sweetie. And all these things are absolutely true. Sweeties can absolutely do this. However, they do remain the one tool for me that absolutely, unequivocally, instantly tells the horse what you just did was what I want. And also, it motivates them to think that, woof, if I do that again, I might get that reward. And so sweeties come under the title of positive reinforcement. Now what positive reinforcement means is that you are adding something to the horse's life when it has done something you want in order to make the horse's life more pleasant. So positive reinforcement can be a rest, a rub, your voice, a clicker noise and a sweetie. And there are probably more, I'm sure there are, but those are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head. And they all add to the horse's life to make it more pleasant. Now, on the other hand, we have negative reinforcement. This also makes the horse's life more pleasant. One more. Good. But it makes the horse's life more pleasant by taking an uncomfortable thing away. So positive reinforcement, you add something, makes the horse's life more pleasant. Negative reinforcement, you take something uncomfortable away, the horse's life is more pleasant. And the uncomfortable thing that we take away is pressure. Pressure in any form. You know, you can have all sorts of pressure. Oh, one more. One more. Yep, yeah, I know. One more. Good. Shh. Shh. So both are absolutely vital horse training aids and both, in order to be effective, rely 100% on timing. So the negative reinforcement there was, I put pressure on him till he backed away, he backed away, I stopped. Negative reinforcement, both fantastic tools for training horses. And now we come to our obstacles. Hi Bruno. Good boy. So the first stage is to get him to see the obstacle. I did a little bit of him seeing the cone at the beginning of this because he was mentally quite scattered. So, yeah, Mum. And Bruno, everything is still happening at the walk because he can't relax and concentrate at the trot. It still becomes all about adrenaline. So yeah, you can check that out. That is stage one. Hello, what a good boy. And then the great thing about these barrels in this pattern, it's quite narrow, 
is we want to encourage the bend. Because bending makes them breathe more deeply, breathing more deeply relaxes them. And although Bruno is now an incredibly, oh no, wrong way. Yep, good boy. Is incredibly lazy when he's not on adrenaline. He still can go on adrenaline in the blink of an eye. We had, good boy. We didn't have the curious incident of the dog in the night time, but we had the surprising incident of the sheep in the daytime. Good. Now, obviously you don't give a sweetie when the horse is expecting a sweetie. So if they're mugging you for sweeties, don't give them one. But if they go, oh, thank you, a sweetie. And basically the rule is they have to earn it. They have to do something to get a reward. And if you've got a really frightened horse that's cowering in the back of a stable, the act of the horse just coming over to see you over the door, that you can reward with a sweetie because it's put an effort in, it's done something you want, want to reward. Anyway, yes, so a sheep, in all its huge white bleating glory, appeared <laughs> on our bank. It's not one of mine, it's an escapee. And um, he absolutely showed me what he's made of. Tail vertical, head vertical, nostrils swollen to the size of planets, a snort that could clear a shipping lane. And his only idea that he had that would make him feel better was to run. And that's what training replaces, that instinct, that I feel upset, I'm full of adrenaline, the only thing I know what to do is run. And this is about giving them an option, and it includes bending. So, off we go. Come on. Good boy. Good. So that gives you an idea. One more. Yeah, good boy. Yeah. And round, go on. Yeah, or oh, not that one. Good. Yeah. So that's a really good pattern. That's a Pat Pirelli pattern, the barrels, the figure of eight, although lots of people use it. That's great for bending and actually the horse putting effort into to bending for a reason because it's going round something. And then poles. You cannot get enough poles in your life to get horses, particularly ones that have been used to going with a hollow back. He's a good boy. Good boy. To get them to stretch, to engage, to look down. So this is something we're working on in trot, but at the moment, head still comes up in trot. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. And again. Shh. 
So you can see just that brief moment of him going over the pole, he has to just do that with his head, which is what we want him to do all the time, work over his back. So you cannot do too many poles. Come on. Not quite. Good boy. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Good. 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 Oh, I want him to just keep trotting over that last one. Yeah, good boy. Come on. Yeah, you find it so hard. And just for the last, I don't know if you've noticed as well that I'm trying to do so much from the right because racehorses, everything happens from the left. There are some yards that actually have rules that you need to handle the horses from the left. So they do become very one-sided. Oh. Good boy. Yeah. Good. Good. Just about. He's very careless. Good boy. Very careless with his back legs, still not thinking. But it just takes time. So there you are, obstacles. Thank you.